What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is David Action Jackson coming at you live. And, well, actually, you just got a really good question. Um, so, a person, well, I'll give you his name since it's, it's a really good question. So, they're on, on here on YouTube. I got a question from... I'm going to say kind of a, sus a subscriber in a way, but here's his, here's his situation. So, um, like me, he kind of has a, what you could call a pacemaker in a way, but it's called an ICD. And it's almost the same thing, but the difference, but like a pacemaker, it's, I want to, mm, I don't really know exactly how to explain the what an ICD is, but here's the situation. So, his name is Lemonte, and he's from Hungary. But his, here's what he says: I used to do exercises every day, or do daily exercises every day, or all the time, basically. But he had to stop for a few months because he had a semi pacemaker, I guess you could say. Um, it's almost the same thing. Because it was a serious myocarditis or myocarditis, um, so it states a little bit better, and he wants to start up again, and well, he's afraid of his lead breaking or fracturing. But his question is, do I have any problems with doing upper body exercises like bench press, back workouts, and any other things like that because of my pacemaker? Um, all right, guys. And girls, if you have a pacemaker and you're afraid of exercising or working out, then this is for you. If you don't have one, it's just you want to learn how to exercise or work out, then I'll tell you how. Now, I'm not a professional, but I am majoring in PE. I'm a college student, um, and I can just tell you about it. So, what a pacemaker is, basically, it's a little machine that sends electricity to your heart. If your heart's lagging a certain beat or rhythm, or if it's just lagging it's other stuff, other, um, other things. Well, for me, in my situation is I have half a heart. Now, you can function without half a heart. It's not actually that hard. You just have to work a little bit harder. Um, and let me just put it like this. It's the same thing as re working out regular but you're limited to how far you can go. Um, let's take bench press, for example. A lot of people have, like, you have bigger guys, and you have smaller guys. Bigger guys have longer arms, smaller guys have shorter arms. We hold a lot more, we get muscle faster, but we hold a little bit more fat than normal people who are taller because their bodies are longer. Now, let's say, you take your pacemaker, for example. Mine is right here on my chest and I don't know if you can see that or not but see a line right here this is where my pacemaker is it all it is is just a little box it's about this big and if you're afraid of your leads breaking because mine actually go under my collarbone but I'm gonna give you advice right now sometimes the doctors who put them inside of your chest or call it cardiologists who put the pacemaker in your chest, they'll lengthen the, the leads a little bit, just to give you some room so you can grow. Now, over the course of two and a half years, I actually grew exponentially. Um, I currently went from 125 pounds. Right now, I'm currently at 209. Between 209 and 210, I'm ma maintaining my weight. Um, but I am working out a lot more. I'm try just trying to add some, some I don't want to say muscle, though I am adding muscle, I want to add some shape onto me more shape but anyways that's beside the point so if you're afraid of working out just experiment a little it's not really um i don't want to say it's it's hard but experiment a little bit like for example <laughs> when i first started working out i was afraid that my leads were going to break i was afraid that something might go wrong. I was afraid that my skin might tear where my pacemaker is. And then I realized 
sometimes you just gotta try stuff out and realize that it, if that does happen, it has to be under the most circumstantial situation. So, for example, if I were to, um, let's say I do some push-ups and I go just a little too hard. So, I get really good contraction and then all of a sudden I stop because my pacemaker is pushing against my skin. I'm about to show you guys what I'm talking about. So, I'm going to do push-ups. I'm not going to do a lot, but I'm going to pretend, and that's the key, pretend that I'm that it's there but it's not there so I'm gonna pretend I can do about 80 push-ups um, that's the that's the key right there is you just try and sometimes you have to risk stuff to be able to experience things but here we go so I'm gonna do about 10 push-ups I can't really do them in a str like I can do 10 15 push-ups but I cannot keep going in one single setting I have to take a break because of my pacemaker so here we go so I'll do about 10. Okay. Now, I'll show you guys. Look, this, like, if you feel right here, like, feel where your pacemaker is. You can feel it. You feel that your pacemaker is right underneath your skin. It's not exactly there because it's under seven layers of skin. So, just feel it. Palpitate it a little bit. And what palpitating means is just to feel, um, feel where it is. Feel where your pacemaker is. Um, or your ICD in your case. Let me say. But, um, just feel it. Because you want to know exactly where it is. I mean, it will move. For example, there was a few times where I do like decline bench press and I'm holding the weight up and then I feel it coming down towards my collarbone. It's not actually coming down, it's just how my muscles are moving, how my chest is contracting. So, in the course of the time that I've been, been bodybuilding, which is almost three years, I'm a, about, well, actually, yeah, I'll say three years now, but, because I started in October 2011, and, or no, June, but anyways, um, so, two years and a few months, anyways, um, in that time limit, I've actually built up quite a bit of muscle. Because I didn't really let the pacemaker thing get to me. And that's the key. Just don't let it get to you. If you have your card or whatever card that they gave you for your ICD or your pacemaker. I'll show you what. If you don't have one, I'll show you what it looks like. So, the medical card I'm talking about. Because this is basically it right here. Um... This will tell you what kind of leads you have if they give you like one or two. Um, they lengthen mine twice, but this is what it looks like. So, and this is this is just proof that I have a pacemaker. Um, don't worry about all the information up here, but whatever. I've had mine since 2008. It's been five years and a few months. Um. And if you can see right here, it's, or right here, it says pacemaker, lead, lead. Now, that, they lengthened my leads twice to give me some room to grow. And that's, that's all you need to know right there, is if you have, a, just the, depending on how much you have, that's how much you can, um, that gives you a kind of a, a small idea of what you can do. Now, bench press wise, I can do bench press. I can kind of, sort of, well, I can do squat. I can do deadlifts. I can do anything that, any other exercise. The only thing I hate doing, because I'm, 
honestly, I don't like doing bench press. It's not really one of my favorite things. Um, though my max on bench press is 2, 230, 245, something like that, around there. But, if you want to do it, you want to work out, all you have to do is just try. That's the best thing you can do. Because it doesn't matter if it's, if you're worried about, well, it does matter that you're worried about your, your fracture, I mean, your lead fracturing. Um, just look at your card. That's the best way you can tell, is just look at your card. And if they give you, um, like a list of the things that they've done for you, like if it's lead, 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 that's how long it'll be. It's not going to be something short, like tiny. Um, though it may feel tiny when you palpitate your skin to see where it's at, but it may be a little bit longer than that. Um, I can't really tell you for sure how long it is because I didn't see how they put it in there. I was asleep at the time, but, or I was actually dead at the time, you could say that. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, just follow this, just watch this video, um, and just take some notes. Take some notes on what I just told you. And then you'll be fine. But uh, if you want to know the types of exercises that you may be limited to because of it, then I'll just let you know right now. So, bench press. Um, chest press. Flies. Like, chest flies. Chest, or... Cable flies. Mm. At some point, depending on how much weight you have, I will say bicep curls. Because you have to swing your arm up. Not really swing it up, but like you have to pull your arm up. Depending on which side your pacemaker is on, it may... You may feel it in your chest a little bit. Um, types of activities that you may be limited to... If it came down to it, running might not be a good idea because the leads, act, well not really the leads, more the machine itself, it has to go into over, not really overdrive, but it has to kick in. So it, it may make your chest hurt if you're doing like high intensity cardio, like jogging or running. It may make your chest hurt, but I don't know that for sure. I just know that's what I feel. Like, I stopped running just because my chest was hurting from it. So. But, when it comes to, like, back, it, mm, if you have to do pulling motions like rows, I would say do those with cable. Like, if you're doing it with a bar, you could do that too. But you have to just pick a weight that's moderate and heavy enough that you could do eight, six to eight reps with. Um. I think that if you do with cables, it's a little bit easier because you don't pull as hard on your on your chest. But that's just my opinion. Anyways, it when it comes to doctors, yeah, doctors are gonna say it's dangerous. They might tell you not to run. They might tell you not to be lifting a lot of weights, not to put your hands up over your head. But if you want to exercise, sometimes you actually have to do some of those things. Running, I don't really think you need, really need to run, because there's other versions of cardio. Um, and as when it comes to lifting your hands over your head, for me, I actually swim. And I, I've honestly just been trying, I've been putting my hands over my head. I do do shoulder press, so my hands automatically go over my head. And I do a bunch of other stuff too. But anyways... Upper body, you just gotta pick things that you know you can do. For me, I don't like bench pressing, but I do it anyways because I want my chest to be formed right. I want it to have some kind of shape to it, at least. Instead of having that little flat chest, um, no shape at all. But I'll show you what my chest looks like. So, ugh. Alright. Now, I'm not at my best, and I'll tell you guys that right now. I'm not at my best. I'm at 209 right now. I may have, like, some... I got some muscle on my chest. But, nothing, like, too bad. So...
Alright guys. So we'll spot like right here. Now remember, I'm at 209. I've been bodybuilding for almost three years now, so I know what I'm doing. Um typically you probably wouldn't be told to 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 do all these exercises and stuff, but you don't you won't know until you try. So that's my advice, and I hope you, I hope you figure out what what's good for you and what's not good for you. Because it's some things you can do, some things you can't do. That's just how it is. But I actually am close to getting my pacemaker removed in a few years, so I'm just waiting for that to go through. But anyways, I hope good luck to you, and I hope that you, if you have any other questions about it, just let me know because I've been. I watched a, a video about how the pacemaker is implanted. It grossed me out. I'm not going to lie. It was the grossest thing I've ever seen. Um, I actually watched them open me up before I passed out. But, you know, that's what happens. I mean, I don't know if that happens, but I had, you know, some things just happen. Um, if you don't know the... If you don't know what my situation is called, it's called a level 3 AV blockage. Um, basically, a bomb half of my heart doesn't work. So, that's how I have half a heart. Um, in all actuality, sometimes it feels like it, sometimes it doesn't, it just depends. But yeah, I'll see you guys later. And I hope you like this video too. Um, this is just an informational video, but it's also to help you out too, so.